name is Ken, but most people call me Mr. Blackneck because I'm a black guy that drives a Jeep and I'm always in the woods. I bow hunt too and I fish, so I'm an outdoorsman. Uh, a little bit about me, my background, pretty military based. My grandfather, he was in the Army, he served in World War II. My dad was in the Marine Corps, he served in Vietnam. I was in the Marine Corps, I served in the first Gulf War. Presently, I have a son who's serving the Navy. This morning, my topic we want to talk to you about is a range bag. And what I want to talk about the range bag first, what is a range bag? Second, why you should have one? And also third, my particular range bag and the contents that I have in mind. I looked up the word range bag on the internet and some of the gun form, and amazingly, I was unable to find anything to find a range bag. So I guess I'm taking initiative to define my definition of what a range bag is. My definition of a range bag is a bag used to store, protect, organize, and transport your gear to the range. That's my definition. Uh, also, I think each range person's range bag is going to depend on what you do and what your purpose is for. And first, why carry a range bag or the purpose of, and purpose of carrying and using a range bag? One, like I said, the store. Keep all your gear together. For example, your weapons, your ammo, your magazine, your cleaning kit, your blowout kit, and so on and so forth. Also, to protect your gear from the elements, for example, the sun, because if you leave, leave your weapons out on an 80 or 90 degree wet day and you try to pick that weapon up, you're going to burn yourself. It's happened. Also, from the rain, because you don't keep your weapon clean and also a top coat of a lubricant or protecting on top of it, it'll begin to rust or tank it. Also, from the snow, dirt, and sand. Also, keep your, keep your stuff together and store it from nosy people or potential thieves. Because there are some bad people out here who want to get a hold of our things that we work so hard to take care of and get. And also, to organize. We want to organize our various components to separate our gear in different compartments. For instance, we'll separate our guns from our ammo, from our magazines, from our cleaning kit, as well as from our first aid kit and our blowout kit. And finally, to transport our product, our weapons. Transport it you know, to the range, to your final destination. And depending on your state, it's very important, because some states, uh, even whether it's concealed or not, if you're transporting, like some states I visited, your weapon and your ammo must be in separate locations in your vehicle. There are states like that. For example, some states, your weapon or and or ammo, one must be in a glove box and one must be in a trunk. They must be separated. So it's also important to do a research in a particular state that you tra live in and also that you may travel through, through your training or visiting family or vacation, so you'll be in proper regulation within the law. Because you don't want to be that guy who you have good intentions that some guy who's doing his job in law enforcement had to enforce the law because of our ignorance. So we have a responsibility to research those things, especially when we travel in different states. First, uh, my first range bag. My first range bag was actually, like they call it, a ditty bag. It was just a thin gear bag that I had when I was in the Marine Corps. It was camouflage. It was made of some raggedy cotton. I just threw all my stuff in there. Uh, it was thin, it was light, and it was cotton. So then I figured I evolved. So I got my next uh, range bag was actually, we call it a pilot's helmet bag. Typically the pilots, from helicopter pilots to uh, airplane pilots, and also some striker and LAVs, which is a light armored vehicle in the Marine Corps, they carried their helmets in there as well for the communication to protect it. It was cool. I thought he had me a pilot bag. You know, but that was my range bag, so I thought it was really cool looking. And then my third range bag, I actually had a small, it's called an all purpose light individual carrying equipment pack. It was better known as the Alice pack. So that was my, that was my third one. I like that when I could throw it on my back and I could go around. But it wasn't very sturdy. It was made of nylon. It didn't support. So next, what I've evolved to now is uh, my range bag. Now range bags can range anyway from my research from $25 to up to $250. The materials have a vast range. They can run from cotton to nylon to polyester. And there's several different companies out there in the market that make range bags. Anywhere from 511 to Allen to Winchester to Cabela's to Max Edition to Bass Pro to Black Hawk and so on. This is that. You have a plethora of different companies you can research and look for that particular range bag that works for you. And the last thing, I'm going to show you my range bag. Ta-da! This is my range bag. Okay? The particular range bag I chose was 511. 
And the reason I chose it, it was just I, uh, it had went. I just looked at several different bags, had a lot of different things that I wanted. So what I all started out with, I took everything I had in my particular range bags and I just dumped everything on the floor, okay? Then I started to guess in different bags, the cubic inches, what I needed and how I wanted to separate stuff. I didn't want different, I wanted to separate things differently. Then I went to the store and tried to figure out with the cubic inches that I had, what would fit into that particular range bag. So I have, this is called the 511 range ready bag. Uh, on 511 site, it goes for around 109 bucks. But typically, if you have some of the loyalty programs, you can, you can research, you can find some things on sale, and it came with free shipping and handling, typically over 99 bucks. Uh, also, I got this for about 75 to 80 bucks. Now, the, this, the dimensions of this particular bag, 9 by 18 by 10, has the good, the great YKK zippers, along with 600 denier polyester, and also has a, a water bottle holder on the outside. And internally, it comes with a removable, as they call it, ammo bag, okay? That you can carry your ammo in one hand and the bag even by hand or throw it over your shoulder. But I don't use the particular carry ammo bag that, come, that it came with. I tend to use a green ammo can, the 50 cal ammo can or 762 or the 223 slash 556 ammo can. That just works for me for the weight just to balance it out. Plus, that thing looks kind of cool to carry <laughs> ammo can until you go to gun range. Uh, now, from that, I personally don't carry that... Uh, uh, that ammo bag, I borrowed it off the trade to a friend of mine. He's happy with it. Now this particular am this particular Range Ready bag has two handles, okay, with a Velcro closure to keep everything tight, and also has a shoulder strap. And I like it because it's padded, because this thing has some weight. Once you load it down with your gear, gear this thing can easily get 15 to 25 pounds, depending on what you have in it. It has five external pockets with zippers, and internally it has. Uh, pockets as well. So what I'm about to do now, I'm going to go over the contents on my particular range bag and just break it out and share with everyone. Now externally, the largest pouch right here has small, eight small magazine carriers, and I'm a Glock guy, so I have plenty of Glock 17, 20, 17, 19, and 26 rounds. It can hold eight of them, as long as uh, right there, then has an internal sleeve. Now I use a couple outdoor ranges, and when you have to go to the range, 10, the law enforcement is secure to ask, hey, do you have permission to be on the range? So I have my range pass for my, that I pay annually to go on to the range. Now also, that's what I carry right there, and also an internal sleeve for things of that nature. Now, making my way around, another external pocket, I have my electronic headgear. And when I took, had the opportunity to take fighting pistol this year, Memorial Day weekend, uh, James Jaeger, he was a lead instructor. Also, Scott Harrison was there and James Owens. And all three of us said you need to make the investment and get electronic headgear. So I'm like, I just have some earplugs and some like twin eye headgear. But they broke it down, you wouldn't be able to hear the instructor and kept saying ha ha and hearing down the line. And also to make the investment, not only protect your ears, but you also broke the information down on the bones on the back, your system. So I've made the investment, it's been a great investment thus far. Working my way around to another exterior bag. Exterior bag. Um, I have poggy bait, junk food. I like beef jerky, deer jerky, have that. Depending on where you shoot, you're gonna need some bug spray. I have allergies, so I have some Allegra, so in case some people get bit or stung up, and also to help things to help me breathe easier. Extra set of keys, because I'm always that guy that loses keys and lock stuff, as you guys already learned this weekend. <laughs> An extra set of gloves. For uh, depending on where you shoot, you get up and you get down for the hands or handgun and transition to other weaponry. Also, I have protect my eye gear. I have a pair of shades that I typically wear that are Oakleys, but sometimes you may be at the range during the evening time or overcast. You have a clear set of shades as well of eye protection. And also, you know, here in this good old Tennessee dirt, you gotta have eye cleaner, particularly for your, uh, for your weapon, I mean, for your glasses as well. Talked about, we had another gentleman before me, he talked about hydration. Ta-da, got my coconut water. That works for me. Those are the five bag, uh, pockets on the exterior. Now let's see what's inside. Now as we work our way inside, I have various things you want to go over. Number one, we'll have uh, go out auto loaders. I have it for my AK-74 and 47, AR-15 auto loader, and a small one for my Glock product, handguns 17, 19, and 26. And of course, you need ammo, plenty of ammo. This is just the extra ammo case my ammo tin runs out. 
and several magazines. AR-15, M16, M4, heavy magazines, at least 10 fit in here very comfortably, very smoothly, very snugly. And then you want to do your manipulation drills. Okay, manipulation drills have dummy rounds and also they call snap caps, also do drills. Inside, when you're on a, if you're scoring someone or taking a new shooter, or if you go through a relay round, you don't want to save money, you want to mark out your first relay, have tons of markers, highlighters and black markers to go through your, your target itself. As long as I have a light cleaning kit, and also and also keep my weapon lubricated. The gentleman that went before me, he talked about the importance of lubrication and also cleaning your weapon, and also a rag to clean it. And also, some of my weapons have uh, scopes on them, so I have a little scope brush to clean it out as well to clean. Also, what is important when I took uh, fighting pistol, and there's another class that's being taught, immediate action medical, that opportunity to take this coming weekend. Uh, they're going to talk about if you have the uh, given opportunity, you can take a life also to help save a life. So you have your basic first aid kit and you also have a blowout kit. Mine's not here. I had a classmate who's fortunately able. I brought the subject matter. He offered his up. So these aren't actually mine. But I know a gentleman when I have a, here with alumni work, his name was Russ. I just call him Wetsu. At AGS, I ordered a couple blowout kits from him, just wait for him to come. Really good contents is all put together and it's uh, in a sealed pack to keep it uh, compact. Spare parts, back plates for my Glock and also springs and auto release lever. Also spare parts, I like being that guy to range some weapons break down, so I always go to the range with a couple weapons. And also my trusty Glock itself, I uh, always go to the range with a couple different weapons. So that's my bag, and also had the opportunity to hear about a great DVD, and I uh, had the opportunity to take a look at it. If you're interested in it, it's called Shooting Missology, for the man, the myth, the legend himself, James Jager. Yes, I keep this DVD with me now. So that's in my bag as well. And also I have targets to go along with me. But basically, in closing, I uh, make the investment into a great quality range bag. Why, you may ask? Because all your gear added up right here I know for me, that's well over $1,000, easily. So I suggest you want to go, you want to store, protect, organize, and transport your future range bag. And I say whatever your gear is added up, and I say take an average 10 to 15% and spend that on your range bag. It's an investment. Because I believe if you take care of your gear now, your gear will take care of you in the future. Uh, please, anyone want to add what things they may have in their range bag at home, or they may have brought the range back here, anybody want to share in the class? Usually had a hat. Outstanding. Yeah, I'm bald. I burn. Black people, we do burn. So, you know, I do have sunscreen. So, you know, you know, yes, a hat. I got a hat from Mr. Yeager class. Anything else I want to add when they have their range bag? Um, extra ears and eyes, mm -hmm. just in case if you bring somebody or if somebody forgets it or it breaks, whatever it might be. Outstanding. That's right. I take some of my buddies and my female friends. They like to go to range. That's a great suggestion. Correct. Outstanding. Yes, sir? Rain gear? Outstanding. Rain gear. Yes, sir. Okay. Any questions or comments? Okay, well today, in conclusion, I was going to talk about, like I said, the range bag. That was my assigned task. And first I said I was going to talk about what is a range bag. I believe I define what a range bag is. Second, why have one? I gave you my opinion why I believe you need to have one. And third, my range bag and its contents. And in close, I have an old saying I've always said, be an asset, not a liability.